Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. My name is Madam Janato Arayan and today I would like to discuss topic 4, Work, Energy and Power. This is the overview for this topic. This topic has three parts, Work, Energy and also Power. The learning outcome for the first subtopic, 4.1 Work. At the end of this topic, students should be able to A. State the physical meaning of dot or scalar product for work B. Define and apply work done by a constant force and C. Determine work done from a force displacement graph Physical meaning of dot scalar product for work can be defined as magnitude of F multiplied by the component of S parallel to F or magnitude of S multiplied by the component of F parallel to S. In other words, if we want to calculate the work, those two vectors must be in parallel, such as in figure 4.1a and 4.1b. Mathematically, work can be written as vector f dot vector s equal to fs cos theta. In our syllabus, the work done by a constant force can be defined as product of the component of the force parallel to the displacement times the displacement of a body or scalar product between force and displacement of a body. Mathematically, it can be written like this. W equal to vector F dot vector S which is W equal to F cos theta times S equal to F S cos theta where F is the magnitude of force S is displacement of the body and theta is the angle between F and S. Work is a scalar quantity and the SI unit for work is kg meter square per second per second or also known as joule. One joule means work done by a force of one newton which results in a displacement of one meter in the direction of the force. Applications of work done by a constant force. There are four cases in total. Case 1, work done by a horizontal force F on an object. Assume that we apply force on the object and then the object is moved to displacement S. Since the direction of F and S are parallel, therefore the theta is 0 degree. So by using the equation of work, W equal to Fs cos theta, so we substitute cos theta is cos 0, meaning that 1, the final product for the work is Fs. For second case, work done by a vertical force F on an object. Let's say we apply the upward force and then the object is moving to the displacement S. In this case, the theta will be 90 degree because the F and the S is perpendicular. We substitute into the equation and then the final work done will be 0 joule because of the cos 90 degree equal to 0. In other words, for this case, no work is done. Case 3. Work done by horizontal forces F1 and F2 on an object. If we have more than one force acting on the object, we have to calculate the overall work done on the object. Such as in figure 4.4, we have F1 and F2, meaning that the overall work will be W1 and W2. So we have to add up F1 as cos theta plus F2 as cos theta. 
Same goes to case 4, which is work done by a force F and frictional force F on an object. Since there are more than one force in this figure 4.5, so we have to consider the overall forces and then the overall work done on the object. So in this case, case 4, the work done will be F S cos theta plus F by friction S cos theta. The theta of the friction and the displacement should be 180 degree. Caution. Work done on an object is zero when force equal to zero or displacement equal to zero or the angle between force and displacement is 90 degree. Sign for work can be positive or negative. If theta is between 0 to 90 degree, which is acute angle, the work done will be positive. The positive work done means work done on the system by the external force where energy is transferred to the system. If the theta in between 90 to 180 degree, which is obtuse angle, the work done will be negative. The negative work done means work done by the system, where energy is transferred from the system. Work done from a force displacement graph. If we have graph force versus displacement, work can be determined from definite integral of displacement 1 to displacement 2 of function force ds. Or in other words, work can be determined from area under the force displacement graph. Learning outcome for the second subtopic, 4.2, Energy and Conservation of Energy. At the end of this topic, students should be able to A. Define and use gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy for spring, and kinetic energy. B. State the principle of conservation of energy. C. Apply the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. D. State and apply work energy theorem. W equal to delta K. Energy and conservation of energy. Energy is a system's ability to do work. The SI unit for energy is same as work, which is joule. Energy also is a scalar quantity. There are so many forms of energy in this world. But in this topic, we are only focusing on mechanical energy, which consists of gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy, and also kinetic energy. Potential energy is an energy stored in a body or system because of its position, shape, and state. In this topic, we are discussing two types of potential energy, gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy. First, gravitational potential energy, U, is an energy stored in a body or system because of its position. The equation for U is U equal to mgh, where U is gravitational potential energy, M is the mass of a body, G acceleration due to gravity, H height of a body from the initial position. U is depends only on the height of the object above the surface of the earth. Elastic potential energy, US, is an 
energy stored in elastic materials as the result of their stretching or compressing. Hooke's law states the restoring force Fs of spring is directly proportional to the amount of stretch or compression. In other words, extension or elongation X if the limit of proportionality is not exceeded or Fs directly proportional to negative x, Fs equal to negative kx, where Fs is the restoring force of spring, k is the spring constant or force constant, x is the amount of stretch or compression. The negative sign means the direction of Fs is always opposite to the direction of the amount of extension or compression, X. There are two cases how the restoring force differ due to how the spring is placed. First case, the spring is hung vertically and it's stretched by a suspended object with mass M. If we look into figure 4.9, if the spring is stretched and the spring is in equilibrium, thus the summation Fy equal to zero, which is the upward force if the restoring force minus the downward force is the weight. In this case, Fs is equal to mg. For the second case, the spring is attached to an object and it is stretched and compressed by a force. In this case, the spring is placed horizontally. In this case, the spring is in equilibrium Hence, the restoring force Fs is equal to F. Caution. For calculation, use Fs equal to Kx equal to F, where F is the applied force. The unit of K can be determined after we rearrange the equation. K equal to Fs over X. Fs is equal to Ma over x. Therefore, the unit of K is Newton per meter or kg per second per second. Work done on the spring also can be determined from the Hooke's law without the negative sign restoring force Fs against extension of the spring x graph. Work can be determined from the area under the graph. The equation for work is half fx. This equation comes from the triangle shape. If we substitute the f to kx, then the equation will become w equal to half kx squared. Therefore, the equation of elastic potential energy us for compressing or stretching a spring is us equal to half kx square or us equal to half fx. Kinetic energy K is an energy of a body due to its motion. K equal to half mv square where K is the kinetic energy of a body, m mass of a body, V speed of a body. Work energy theorem states that work done by the net force on a body equals to the change in the body's kinetic energy. Total work done equal to change in kinetic energy. W equal to delta K or K final minus K initial. Principle of conservation of energy states that in an isolated or closed system, 
the total energy of that system is constant. In other words, the initial of total energy is equal to the final of total energy or can be written as sum E initial equal to sum E final. Conservation of mechanical energy states in an isolated system, the mechanical energy of a system is the sum of its potential energy U and the kinetic energy K of the objects are constant. E equal to K plus U equal to constant or K initial plus U initial equal to K final plus U final. The learning outcome for the last subtopic 4.3 power. At the end of this topic, students should be able to A. Define and use average power and instantaneous power and also B. Verify the law of conservation of energy. This only will be discussed in experiment 3, energy. Average power can be defined as rate at which work is done or a rate at which energy is transferred. P average equal to delta W per delta T equal to delta E per delta T. Power is a scalar quantity and the unit for power is kg meter squared per second per second per second or joule per second or watt. 1 horsepower is equivalent to 746 watt. For instantaneous power, P equal to delta W per delta T. And delta W is equal to F cos theta delta S. Hence, P equal to F cos theta delta S per delta T. And V, the velocity, is delta S per delta T. Therefore, P equal to F V cos theta or can be written as P equal to dot product of F and V where F is the magnitude of force, V magnitude of velocity and theta is the angle between F and V.